Since the 1930s, people all over the country have been turning to protein shakes for what they think will build muscle and make them look stronger. Protein drinks are a disturbing new trend that has taken off without the slightest regard for health and safety. Today, there are entire drink shops dedicated to the sale of protein and other supplement-enriched drinks. We visited one such place in our own area. Smoothie King is a franchise business that sells smoothies made with fruit, vegetables, and a wide range of enhancers. These enhancers range from high caffeine shots to their very own protein powder blend. It is interesting to note that none of these added enhancers are FDA approved. The company themselves have added warning labels all over their menu. In 2010, a Consumer Report article came out exposing many possible health risks associated with protein drinks. First, they found that diets very high in protein cause many health problems, most severely kidney damage. Second, many brands were found to contain frightening levels of heavy metals, including lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic. Our own research has exposed that some brands are now marketing protein powders, which include ProHormone, a dangerous supplement used by many bodybuilders. Dr. Perry Wolkweiss, a medical professional and workout enthusiast, explains what all of this means. As a medical professional, mm -hmm. what are the health benefits of consuming um, protein supplements when working out? Well, one of the problems with protein supplements that I see and why I don't think people should use them when they work out is because most people are not working out the level that they need that. They get more than it. Most Americans get too much protein in their diet. And I mean, an average athlete needs about a gram of protein per body weight. An average person that's not highly athletic only needs about 0.4 or half a gram of protein per body weight, and most people get more than enough. Okay. Um, so they really don't need the added protein. It's a big fallacy that the protein manufacturing companies want to get across. Um, would you be surprised to learn that many protein drink brands have been found to contain contaminants including arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury? Nope. I've seen the research that shows that many of them have that in it. Have you read the Consumer Report article? Yeah, I saw that. that. first brought that to light? Yep. Um, of these four contaminants, which would you consider to be most dangerous to the body? All of them. Well, lead creates brain dysfunction. Arsenic, in long term use, will kill you. And um, what was the other one? Cadmium. Cadmium. Yeah, cadmium is a heavy metal that's going in your body. All of them actually eventually end up in the brain someplace, and that's not good. You know that high protein diets have been shown to lead to kidney, kidney damage, and what do you know about this? Yeah, well, when you have too much protein in your body and your body's not utilizing it, what's going to happen is it's going to be turning in byproduct of uric acid. For example, gout, which is a problem with too much uric acid, came about from the days when people had too much meat. And you always saw it, and it was called the, you know, the royal disease of the princes and the kings, because they were able to eat that, and the paupers never ate that kind of food. So when you're having too much protein in your meal, you're going to have producing too much uric acid, which means your kidneys are going to be stressed trying to get rid of it. Did you know that some protein drink brands are now including pro-hormones to promote muscle growth? As a medical professional, what are the dangers associated with pro-hormones? Well, I didn't know that, but I could just imagine with pro-hormones you're putting into your body, you're starting to alter what your body is naturally producing, and you're adding excess into it. It's no different than when women have to take estrogen, and if they're not taking a bioidentical hormone, you're going to create problems with that, and that's the same thing with the pro-hormones. We went to our own Rutgers gym and interviewed students who work out frequently. We found a high prevalence of protein supplement use. So do you take any supplemental protein drinks or other? Uh, I only take 100% whey protein. That's it. You take any supplements, protein supplements? I uh, I take whey, whey protein powder. Uh -huh. I mix this with water usually. And um, I used to take a little bit of creatine monohydrate. Do you take any protein supplements or any kind of? I take protein in a uh, pre-workout. Okay, so. Do you know, do you mind telling us what you take? Um, I just take a basic whey protein and I take that uh, usually about two or three times a day and then I take a uh, pre-workout, either jacked or an NO shotgun just to uh, get my blood flowing before the gym. Most of the men that we spoke with used protein drinks. 
However, none of the women used them. Okay, do you take any uh, any additional uh, protein supplement to your diet? No, I just do the like normal thing and then like sometimes multivitamins, but no like extra protein or anything like that. Do you take any protein supplement? No, not at all. Do you take any supplement? I take like vitamins. Vitamins? Yeah. Okay. So what do you, where do you get your protein from? Um, like eating meat, I guess. Do you take any protein supplements? Um, no. I, sometimes I'll have like a protein bar afterwards if I'm like lifting weights, but okay. um, no, I don't usually take like, I don't do like the shakes or anything like that. What do you take for your protein? Do you take any supplements? I used to, but um, I stopped. I just started eating more of the diet. No. So like, well, what do you use to take? Uh, just the, the whey protein stuff that you get at like GNC. And it just comes in like a big tub, yeah. The people we spoke with who didn't use protein drinks said their natural diet was sufficient. So you yeah. never required uh, the need of taking extra protein well, to your diet? Well, No, because I just want, I want to be fit. I don't want to like get bigger muscle. I just want to like... Be, you know, like be able to go running somewhere, do any activity I want without like having my heart strained or anything like so that. So why? What's your? What do you take for protein in your regular diet? Just like you know, chicken, fish, meat. Like mm -hmm. just make sure I have a balanced diet, yeah. so that way I don't need any additional do things. Um, what is a good alternative to consuming protein drinks? What would you consume after a workout? Um, the thing I actually like after a workout better are things to replace some of the electrolytes, not necessarily particularly things like some of the sports drinks, but you can just have juice, good old-fashioned juice. Um, there are some products that work really well for high-intense athletes, like a product called Fluid, which I recommend a lot because it has high glycine in it, um, and which really helps the muscles recover a lot faster. But overall, for example, scrambled eggs, three scrambled eggs will give you 20 grams of protein, and it'll cost you about 42 cents. So it's a lot cheaper to go with the food than it is to go with the added protein drinks. So take it from the professional. The next time you come home from the gym, open the fridge, turn on the stove, and scramble an egg.